Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in return with having. When I'm looking at making my life, I'm looking at who is my life partner. The problem is someone is hacking my accounts, interfering with my YouTube channel, deleting my online profiles, and ruining my life through cybercrime. Today's world is about identity theft and fraud. People of all walks of life are committing this instance of identity theft. What I mean is that they're pretending that they have the rights to talk about people in consumer rights. They don't. You have employees in your company, and your employees are giving out information in ill will. Someone might say, who's that, or what are they about, and what did they buy? And they think it's an innocent conversation with the next person in line. It's not. It's a form of mobbing. It's a stalking technique. It gives information to people that have no rights to it. Underneath the concept of consumer rights, we have the right to return goods if they don't work. That is truthful. But we also have the right to privacy of our purchases. Our discretionary income, what we have as extras, aside from the fact that we might have rent or food or other type of expenditures, is our business. It's not your employee's business to dole out that information. It's also not your employee's business to track that information for any person in the company or any person at the corporate level. That is a violation, I believe, of federal law because it sets someone up for harm. It sets someone up for things being stolen, and I've had plenty of things stolen out of my bags since I've stayed around this area. Now, who does that? Is an employee doing that? Is the employee of a Dollar Tree doing that? Probably. But the problem is that they think that they have retaliation opportunities. Retaliation opportunities is what a 12-year-old mind thinks about. An adult mind thinks about what happens if they're caught and what happens if they're found. What I mean is the child that's been playing on my YouTube channels, playing on my other channels, how do they do that? What I saw was the purchase of an email address of some kind or some sort of systems or some sort of privacy, and I immediately stopped that. But the question is, how did they get on to my YouTube channel? Did they lie through their Microsoft Outlook program? saying who they were or did they take a passcode out of a book and start to play around on a YouTube channel what I want to know is who has my passcode books that's supposed to be in storage does a police officer have that does a sibling have that who has my set of three blue books blue notebooks that take care of that you see the person with that is the one who's performing illegally or morally or it's someone in their household or someone in their school system the question is who is that because I'm looking for content and finding stuff missing and at this point I'm coming after you you have violated federal law you have violated your rights in any way if you're part of my original family and you're lying to yourself about your rights to commit identity theft fraud and cybercrime